Uh, on Facebook, I'm friends with a lot of Christians. Another day, a preacher in the Church of Christ, whom we'll call Perry Hall, because that's his name, and his post is public, was talking about forgiveness and vengeance. In the discussion, I recognized a biblical contradiction I hadn't noticed before. During the discussion, Michael W. Green said, Forgiveness is giving up the desire to see hurt those who have hurt you. I certainly agree that this would have to be a part of forgiveness. We can't forgive yet want to repay the unkindness or abuse. That's revenge, not forgiveness. Green agrees because he went on to say, Sometimes we are pleased to experience the satisfaction of vengeance through the actions of others. Forgiveness, it seems to me, is giving up that desire to witness the recompense from wherever or whomever it comes. Again, I agree. Otherwise, what's the point of forgiveness? Forgiveness means that we no longer hold the person accountable. According to Dictionary.com, forgiveness means to grant pardon or remission, to absolve, to give up all claim on account of a trespass, debt, or obligation, to cease to hold resentment. Someone recently told me that she will always resent me. This was because I support a beloved family member of hers who no longer walks the straight and narrow. The Christian who said this to me plans to go to her grave and face her God, holding a grudge against me. And the response that Perry Hall gave Michael Green reminds me of this person's unwillingness to forgive me. The next comment by Perry is what really caught my attention in the discussion on Facebook. Perry's response to Green was, Except we can still desire God's vengeance. Well, I have to tell you, of all the contradictions in the Bible, and there are many, this, to me, is one of the most blatant, as well as the most harmful. It's one thing to say that people have seen Yahweh, but nobody can see Yahweh. Isaiah was two when he became king in Israel, but no, he became king at the age of 42. Or even that Yahweh punishes children for the deeds of their parents, but no, he doesn't do that. These are biblical contradictions, but they have no real effect on our lives. However, this particular contradiction, to forgive but still want vengeance, strikes at the very core of Christianity. Praise right, though. The Bible clearly says to leave vengeance to the wrath of Yahweh. And the dead, martyred saints under the altar were obviously waiting, albeit impatiently, as they cried loudly for Yahweh to rain down pain and misery on those who killed him. I guess unless you're a Predator's Christian, you think those dead martyrs are still lying there, begging for hell's flames to engulf their enemies. But Proverbs 24, 17 says not to rejoice when your enemy falls, and not to let your heart be glad when he stumbles. But what, you're eager for Yahweh to cast the person into hell? Romans 12, 14 says to bless people who persecute us. And Matthew 5, 38-48 says not only not to want harm to our enemies, but to allow them to mistreat us over and over. If they smite us on one cheek, we turn the other. We're to love them and pray for them. I'm sorry, but you can't love your enemy and pray that good may come upon him while desiring vengeance to be meted out against him. These two feelings are not compatible. Is this the kind of forgiveness Perry or, or other Christians want from their God? He loves them and forgives them, but he's going to bring down vengeance on them anyway? Oh, I know our enemies might not repent, but that's beside the point, isn't it? We're supposed to love them anyway. And loving them prevents us from wanting any evil to befall them, either in this life or the next. If there is a next. We can't love and do good to people while also desiring pain and misery to rain down upon them, whether in life or in death. One time someone close to me was having a problem with another person who had been cruel. The one having the problem felt that they had a dark hole in their heart because of this cruelty. Being a Christian at the time, I suggested praying for this other person. And it worked. Why? 
Well, not because any God helped the situation, but because praying or thinking and wishing good for another person changes our hearts toward the person. We can't long for their good and long for vengeance to be brought against them at the same time. But this is the kind of craziness we have to accept if we believe the Bible to be the Word of God and something we should turn to in order to live a good life. And I don't think Christians even feel any cognitive dissonance regarding this. Well, I guess Michael Greenwood, but Perry Hall and many other Christians obviously do not. It feels perfectly fine to them to declare that they have forgiven while they long for vengeance. Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. But Paul, an antichrist, if ever there was an antichrist, and the man who is really the person many Christians follow uh, rather than Jesus, said, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Paul also said that he wanted anyone who doesn't love Jesus to be cursed when Jesus comes back. You know, the Bible says that Christians are always to speak with grace, seasoned with salt. But I found that Christians can be some of the most hateful people I encounter. And I'm not referring to Perry here. I've always found him to be kind and considerate in his dealings with others. But just the other day, I commented that Satan doesn't exist. That's it. That was all I said, that Satan doesn't exist. The person I said it to replied, I suppose you fancy yourself an intellectual. I feel sorry for you. No grace, no salt, not even any kind of rebuttal, just a snotty comment. And yes, this is more often than not how it usually goes, and right off the bat, too. I have three choices when when a Christian behaves like this. First, I can let the person drag me down to the mud with them, which I can't do because I I can't behave in such a deplorable manner. Second, I can let my own speech be with grace, seasoned with salt, and respond kindly. But for one, why would I subject myself to even more abusive behavior? And for two, why should I even talk to someone who is mean enough to behave this way? Or third, I can ignore the person and hope my lack of response causes them to regret their bad behavior. And the third thing is what I tend to do. I mean, as the Beatles told us, life is very short and there's no time for fussing and fighting, my friends. Christians are really big on doctrine. They love to argue about it. But when it comes to really living the life their book tells them to live, they don't, for the most part, even try. And I know that some do. I myself know some really good Christians who would never deliberately be cruel. Christians are to love their neighbor as themselves. This is the royal law in the second commandment Jesus gave. Of course, Christians don't obey this. Well, nobody does. I mean, it's kind of stupid. We can't possibly love everybody the way we love ourselves. I mean, our children, sure. And we can love them more than we love ourselves. We can forgive them as they stick a knife in our bags. But even though we can't obey this, we certainly can. And if we're Christian, we certainly should. Forgive and never ever seek or even long for vengeance. As Michael Green said, to be brought on anyone by by anyone. And anyone includes Yahweh. I'd say it especially includes Yahweh because his vengeance is worse than anything a human can do. A few years ago, while I was still a Christian but a preterist, another Christian, again a Church of Christ preacher, talked horribly to me on Facebook for a long time. And before I thought to screenshot his bad behavior, he deleted everything he said. He obviously didn't want his hateful words being spread around. And I guess y'all, he doesn't read Facebook, so he couldn't see the cruel comments this good Christian made. Some things that go on in Christianity, I get. It's hard not to say something we shouldn't say. It's hard not to do something we shouldn't do. That's the case for all of us, Christian or not. But when a Christian not only wants vengeance, but is brave enough to speak that desire publicly, or when a Christian deliberately plans to hold resentment against another person and face their God with that resentment, something is badly wrong in Christendom. 
Y'all can sit up there on your high horse and look down on the rest of us all you want. But when you behave towards your enemies worse than we do, you might want to take stock. Listen, we all have enemies. I have enemies. But I'm telling you, I want vengeance on no one. The Bible says God, our Savior, wants everyone to be saved. But Christians, as Perry Hall stated, can still desire God's vengeance. Meaning, of course, that Christians are allowed to have such unforgiving hearts that they don't desire what their God desires. And I was going to say how unlike Jesus, but that the truth is, Jesus, despite asking Yahweh to forgive his murderers, said he came to bring fire on the earth, and he desperately wished it were already burning. Anyway, in case you wonder, no. You can't forgive someone and then also desire vengeance. If you desire your God to bring down vengeance on someone, you might as well do it yourself. After all, if you lust after a woman, you've already committed adultery in your heart. So I think that if you long for vengeance, you've already taken it in your heart. Despite what the Bible tells you, you you can forgive or you can want vengeance, but you can't do both. That's just an impossibility. You can want to forgive. (laughs) You can say you've forgiven. But if you want vengeance, no forgiveness has been forthcoming. And saying that both are possible and commendable, It's just another biblical contradiction. Thank you all. Bye.